Minecraft Bedrock Edition, a version of Minecraft a lot of us, including me, grew up on. As I started with Pocket Edition, then went over to Xbox, and more recently, I've been on Java. Both versions of the game are very similar, but do have some differences, like the combat. Ah! I'm Night Cirque, and today I will be surviving 100 days on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Before we get into this, I do have three goals I want to complete before the 100 days are over. Goal number one, make an XP farm of some sort. An XP farm will be incredibly useful and definitely is super important to have. My second goal is to get a full set of diamond armor and diamond tools. And my third goal, defeat the ender dragon. Day one begins with me spawning in the Badlands right in between two deserts. And soon after I spawn, I see two villages and a desert temple. So I punch my very first tree and make my way towards the village. Once I get to the village, I decide to just borrow some stuff. Afterwards, I crafted my very first tool and decided to check out that desert temple. I made my way down to the chest room and sadly there wasn't really any good loot. I mean, we did get a saddle and some horse armor, but nothing really too, too valuable like diamonds. I then leave the temple and make my way over towards that second village. I borrow just a couple things yet again. And then I have a very important decision at the end of day one, which color bed do I want to go with? Day two begins with me making my way over towards the jungle I see at the very end of this desert. After exploring the jungle for a little bit, I do see that this is not a big jungle. So I decide to craft a chest with a bow and go look for a bigger jungle. While I was boating, I saw a ruined nether portal in the distance. So I went to check that out and... The loot wasn't too crazy, there was just a couple of enchanted golden items. And since it was getting close tonight, I had the thought of just staying on this island for the night and then making my way over towards the jungle I see in the distance. But after a hit from a trident took over half my hearts, I decided we'll go to that jungle island now. I get to the jungle right before the sunset, watch the sunset with some turtles, and then I move my boat to a deeper spot in the jungle because I can't just break my boat and go explore because this chest has all of my loot. I then leave my boat there planning to come back when I find where my base will be. I climb a tree so I can get a good view on how big this jungle is and where I want to build my base in this jungle. I saw this amazing lake in the center of the jungle and I knew this is where I want to build my base. So I set up a little camp, emptied my inventory, went back to collect the loot from our boat and then came back to where our new base will be. Day four begins with me finding a little spot for us to build our mine shaft. I want to clear out a bunch of area where our base is at, but I do not want to do that with stone tools. So I want to mine down a little bit, hopefully just to find some iron to make an ax so we can clear out our area a lot faster. I luckily end up coming across eight pieces of iron. So I smelt that, make an ax and get to chopping. Sadly in Bedrock, there is no replay mod. So through these 100 days, I will not be able to do a cool little cinematic time lapse. With all of those trees cleared, we now have three stacks of oak logs and over two stacks of jungle logs. The next step for us is to flatten this area out just a little bit with our efficiency two golden shovel. And that was not enough, so I made a stone shovel. And that was not enough, so I made another stone shovel. And that was not enough. But I now finally finished flattening out this area. Now it was just time to use this extra dirt to fill in some little holes. I got some sugarcane planted, watched the sunset with our new friend. I turned coordinates on because I wanted to go mining and coordinates can be very useful when you're down in the caves. But since I couldn't find a cave near me, I decided to check out underneath this lake. It went pretty deep and while I was down underwater, I did see a moss block, so I broke it and it led us into a moss covered ravine. And this is one of the coolest caves I've ever come across. Sadly, the look of this cave was the only cool thing about it as in total i was able to find 40 iron about half a stack of gold and no diamonds i was very disappointed by the end of this trip i made my way back to surface by the end of day eight and i smelted the iron and gold that we were able to find i move our little setup over just a little bit because right here is where i actually want to build our house i then collect our smelting ores and make an iron chest plate and some iron pants i saw this cow off in the distance so i went 
to grab some wheat. And then I led him back to this little hole where we are going to start our cow farm. The next thing I wanted to do was get started on building our first house. But first I knew I was going to need stone bricks. So I went down into our little mine shaft, started mining for some cobblestone. Day 10 begins with me seeing the sheep and deciding to start a little sheep farm. I then head back to our mine shaft, mine some coal and mine some iron. I also go through and collect our sugarcane that has been growing and expand our sugarcane farm. I then dig up some sand for our windows and get some wood ready to build our house. I then begin the outline of our house and then I realize I actually want our house to be elevated so I take it down, work on making some stilts and that is it for day 10. Day 11 we start with this and day 11 we finish with this. Yeah I couldn't really decide on how I wanted our support beams to go. I built this little pathway that was going to be around the edge of our house. It just seems like it really fits with this jungle theme. I then started to make this railing around the outside of where our little pathway is at. I started mining even more cobblestone. Once I finished our railway, I knew I was going to need more, so here we are. Now it is time to actually get working on our house, and here's how that went. I first started off making these pillars. I then added the spot where we are going to have our windows at, and then it's time to make our roof. Once I was finished with one third of the roof, I decided to take a look, and I thought, oh, I made the roof on the wrong angle. So what did I do? I took down the roof. Only afterwards did I realize, oh, I didn't make the roof on the wrong angle, so I had to build up the exact same roof. Afterwards, I built the same exact roof on the other side, and then the same one facing a different angle on the tippy top, went through with a little bit of touch-ups on the outside, and this is what we got. I actually really do like how this house came out, but within these 100 days, I will be making changes to improve our house even more. I spent the rest of day 16 and day 17 working on the interior of our house. And this is what we got. I really want our house to follow the jungle theme and have leaves and vines all throughout the house. And I really, really do love how this house came out on the inside and on the outside. Next up, I collected sugarcane from our little farm and then I entirely surrounded a little island with sugarcane. I went to go chop down some trees so we can get some wood and I also terraformed our land a little more because the next thing I want to do is start a little cow and sheep farm. Day 19 begins and before I start with the animal farm, I wanted to go get some iron because we were running incredibly low on iron. So I made some doors and went down into our little lake and went to go collect some iron. But I did not realize you can't actually use doors for air pockets. And I was so confused because I had no idea they made this update. Soon after I went down to the bottom of the lake to collect magma blocks. So whenever I need air pockets, I can just make an air pocket for myself and I mined iron that way. I also collected some moss blocks while I was down by the cave. On day 20, it was time for me to start building our little animal pens. So I dug out a little hole that I was going to put them in and then had this small little build up top. Overall, it's filled with nature and I do like how it came out. Very simple, but definitely fits in with the jungle. I built a second one for the sheep and transferred our animals. Afterwards, I went over to our mine shaft because I wanted to start a branch mine so we can start getting some diamonds. But on my way digging down, I came across a mine shaft, which is incredibly lucky. And here's how that went. We got into a couple of fights, explored the mine shaft, found a name tag, and came across diamonds. I did end up making a diamond sword and a diamond pickaxe. Then we mined some obsidian and I found more diamonds. Day 24 starts with a super intense fight against an enderman. The next thing I want to do is get to enchanting, but before we can get to that, we will need a lot of leather, so I am now looking for another cow so we can start our cow farm. I eventually found two cows, was only able to bring back one of them, but on my way back, it was becoming night and things got a little tough and we almost died. I am aiming for no deaths through these 100 days and that was just super, super close. I now wanted to start branch mining for diamonds, but as I was going down, I came across a spider spawner, which at the time I wasn't super happy just because I've only built one spider XP farm ever and it didn't come out too well. So at this point, I wasn't really planning on turning this into an XP farm. Eventually, I did make my way down right above bedrock and started our branch mine. I did eventually come across diamonds and and more diamonds, but I did not pick them up yet because I wanted to wait till we can get fortune three. The next thing I wanted to do was have a spot for our enchantment table. So I cleared out this little island, completely flattening it out. And at the end, this is what we were left with. I knew I wanted our enchantment table to be in the trees. So I planted a jungle tree on the center of this island and I made a little bridge going over the water to this island. 
Our bridge is very simple yet very nice. Afterwards, I expanded our cow farm and our sheep farm. Next up, I wanted to make a wheat and carrot farm on this little island surrounding our tree. Carrots are going to be very helpful in the future and wheat is going to be very helpful now with breeding our animals. Once I was on top of the tree, I realized I do want the tree to be taller. So I planted a tree on top of this tree and now we have two trees. So it looks like it's just one big jungle tree. And the view all around from this tree was so much nicer. And this is where I really started to feel like our base was coming along. I proceeded to create the enchantment table, almost suffered the first death of the 100 days, and I placed our enchantment table on top of the tree where our enchantment setup will be. I then farmed some sugarcane, cleaned out our inventory, and went to sleep. Now there was a three day span where I pretty much did nothing except sit, wait, and expand our cow farm. After those three days, I collected the leather from the cows, but it still was not enough to give us a full level 30 enchantment, but there was a silk touch enchantment. So I got that on my diamond pickaxe and mined up those diamonds with silk touch. Then I spent two more days waiting for the cows to grow just so I can get enough leather to get a level 30 enchantment with all those bookshelves. A 37 hits and I now finally have a level 30 enchantment table. So I enchant and disenchant our pickaxe until Till I come across a fortune three. My original plan to get these 13 levels for fortune three was to stay out in the night and fight monsters, but that was not working out too well. I did trap a zombie villager, by the way. So my next idea was to go to the nether for the first time. So I made our nether portal on our little sugarcane island so I can mine nether quartz because that is amazing for experience. And that was going pretty well until little pigments realized I wasn't wearing gold. So it got way too dangerous for me, so I had to leave the nether. My next idea to get experience was to sit down in our spider spawner and fight the spiders as they would spawn. At this time, I did not want to create a spider XP farm. I've had a bad experience creating it before and I did not want to go through that again. So I just sat here fighting the spiders as they spawn. And we finally hit level 30. After that time, just sitting there fighting them as they spawn, I did realize that it definitely would have been better to just make a spider XP farm. So that's on me. Now that I'm finally level 30, I can get that fortune three pickaxe so i mined up three diamonds made a diamond pickaxe and got fortune three and efficiency four on our new pick and from those six diamonds we had left i got 10 diamonds which definitely isn't the best but i guess we did gain four from what we could have had and this is only the beginning of fortune three i then took three of our now 17 diamonds and made a diamond axe and with this diamond axe i couldn't get a level 30 enchantment but the lower enchantment did have efficiency three so i took that i put our new axe to the test and i needed to get a bunch of logs so i can make charcoal now it's time for us to go to the mine shaft so we can go look for some more diamonds with our fortune three pickaxe because i really do want to get full diamond armor and a full set of diamond tools i did end up finding diamonds There were 10 diamonds. And with our fortune three, we did get 24 diamonds. Now, since I've never come across a vein that big before, I did show that I have never switched this world into creative or activated cheats on this world, just because that was very strange to me. With our now 38 diamonds, I created a full set of diamond armor and a full set of diamond tools. And on day 43, we have accomplished our first goal. The next thing I wanted to do was complete another goal and turn our spider spawner into a spider XP farm. So I got together everything that I would need. I went down to our spider spawner and got building the XP farm. If you want to know how to build the exact same XP farm I built, head over to JC Plays. I'll have a link in the description. He is the one who made the tutorial that I am using for this XP farm. While I was following the tutorial, I did mine right into diamonds, which was super cool to find. I finished the XP farm and sat AFK for three days with no sleep. If you want to build this for yourself, the tutorial I used will be in the description down below. I end up coming out level 36, which is enough levels for three level 30 enchantments. So I went to our enchantment tree and I proceeded to enchant all of our armor.
we are just about halfway through and things are looking great. I do want to say if you are enjoying this so far, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't done so already. If you do like survival let's plays, I do currently have a 1.19 Java survival let's play series going on right now. Earlier in these 100 days, I enchanted a diamond sword and just got unbreaking three. So I went to enchant another diamond sword. I reset the enchantment one time and I saw a sharpness four. So I sat AFK in our spider XP farm four days 50 and 51 to get these eight levels I needed. Now on day 52, I am level 30, so I can enchant this diamond sword. And I enchanted it for sharpness four, and I ended up getting looting three, unbreaking three, and knockback two on it. And the whole reason I wanted to enchant a sword was because I was getting ready to go into the nether. Because the next thing I want to do is face the ender dragon. But to do that, I need ender pearls and blaze powder. Day 53, I got everything I needed to head into the nether safely, including turning on my coordinates which turned out to be a great decision. My master plan was to give these piglins gold so I can hopefully get ender pearls. I see all the speedrunners do that. And apparently I don't know what I'm doing because I just gave the three of them a stack of gold and I got zero ender pearls in return. But I did get two fire resistant potions, which is perfect because that is what you need in the nether. Day 54 and I come across a biome in the nether that spawns endermen like crazy. So I stayed around here and fought endermen for quite a while and with our looting three it was very easy for us to rack up our ender pearls by the way how i'm counting the days in the nether is every 20 minutes of recording i just go up a day because it's 10 minutes for a day 10 minutes for the night and since there's no daylight cycle this is just the best and most accurate way for me to continue counting the days while we're in the nether i had plenty of crazy different fights but none of them were as intense as this one Down to half a heart and I am just hoping so bad that I do not die right here. To possibly lose all of my loot this deep in the nether. And then I gotta make this crazy jump right here. But we do end up being safe and I just sat here after my life flashed before my eyes. Day 55 and 1500 blocks away from spawn and I still have not come across a nether fortress. So now I thought it was time for me to go back to spawn and possibly look in a different direction. But sadly for me, the craziness was not over yet. I threw this ender pearl, not realizing I would overthrow the little cliff and I landed in a lava fall. I luckily did have this fire resistance potion on me, but this was yet again another point where my heart was racing like crazy. Right here is the last close call in the nether. I actually opened my inventory, but when I did that, I was actually looking at the enderman and... I didn't get too close to dying, but I really was scared at this point. Day 57, and I finally made it back to our portal. I emptied out my inventory, preparing to go back to the nether, but head off into a different direction to hopefully find a nether fortress. And that is exactly what I do. Day 58 comes along, and I head off in the exact opposite direction that I went in last time, in hopes for a nether fortress. And after going 400 blocks, I finally come across a nether fortress with a blaze spawner. So I kind of build around the blaze spawner so a gas doesn't blow it up, and I sat here collecting blaze rods. I make it back the morning of day 59 and I am almost ready to face the ender dragon. I then spend all of day 59 chopping down trees. After coming that close to death, I just wanted a day to relax. Day 60 and it's time to continue preparation for the ender dragon fight. I enchant my very first bow and get unbreaking three and power four. The next thing I wanted was infinity, so I enchanted and disenchanted until I found that. I finally did end up coming across infinity and guess what it is now time to sit afk at our spider xp farm yet again i do make my way up as it's turning night and i get infinity i then make another diamond chest plate hoping to get a nice enchantment to combine it with the one we have now but i do only end up getting unbreaking two i then combine our two enchanted bows combine our two enchanted chest plates and heal all of our armor. I then make Eyes of Ender and it is time to find where the end is at. I throw my first Ender Eye and it points back towards the direction of spawn and it doesn't break. And actually none of my Ender Eyes through this whole process broke. 
Day 64 and we are back at spawn following our ender eye. I did come across a ruined nether portal and another desert temple, but there was really nothing to mention from either of them. I did come across this desert temple that was buried within a village, which is super cool, but the loot was nothing too crazy at this point of the game where we're at now. I then traveled off a bit through another Eye of Ender and it was pointing right back to the village we were just at. And yes, the stronghold is located under this village. It was now time to travel back home, drop off all of this loot we've gathered, and gear up completely for this fight. Before I left for this crazy battle, I've named our panda that's been with us since the beginning, Billy, gave him some bamboo, and it was time for us to go back to the stronghold. Bum, bum, bum. As I was right in front of the portal, I set up a little camp where I dropped off some extra armor and set my spawn just in case I did happen to die. And on day 67, it's time for us to take on the Ender Dragon. For this Ender Dragon fight, I was going to do live commentary, but that wasn't really working out, so... The Ender Dragon spawns and the fight begins. Before I started to fight the Ender Dragon, the only thing I wanted to do was take out these towers. But I had such a hard time doing so. At this point, I was just broken inside. <laughs> Yet again, another point where my heart is pounding like crazy. Yes! Oh my gosh! Oh. <laughs> yes! I have no idea what day it is, but let's go! The Enderman made that so, so much harder. The next time I ever do that, I'm definitely wearing a pumpkin head. We successfully defeated the Ender Dragon on day 68. And on day 69, I make my way back to home base. Overall, I did have fun fighting the Ender Dragon. There were two points where we got down to half a heart, and I think two more points where we got down to two hearts. It definitely was very difficult, especially with my bow accuracy and me accidentally looking at the Enderman a bunch. Before day 70 even hits, we have now completed all three of our goals I had from the beginning. And now I want to use these 60 levels to enchant, and then afterwards, I want to get an iron farm started. We still have 31 days to go. Let's do this. Now it is time to enchant with these 60 levels. So first I enchant a shovel and get Unbreaking 3, Fortune 3, and Efficiency 4. Then I had to create a new axe because I left my Efficiency 3 axe back at the stronghold. And after resetting the axe enchantment one time, I got an Efficiency 4 axe. And now it was time for me to enchant and disenchant a bunch of books until I got what I want. From these four books, I got an Aqua Affinity, a Projectile Protection, a Fire Protection, and a Power 4. Day 70 starts with me just adding the books to my armor and to my bow. And we now have Power 5 on the bow, and this is what I have on our armor. 
I then repair both of our pickaxes. Then I created a map and thought it was time to explore around our base. But that didn't really last long and I came back. Day 71 and I am now adding chimneys to our house. And it definitely does add a lot to our house. I expand our carrot farm and this is where the thought to create an iron farm comes into my head. Day 72 and I am now off to the nearest village that I know of to collect two villagers. I get to the village, get two villagers in the boats, and in Dallas Med's newest video, he mentions something about in bedrock, you can use a lead to connect the boat, to drag the boat. So that is exactly what I did, which makes this two times faster. I got the villagers to land, but to get them all the way to my house, I would need rails to transport them there. So I went down to our mine shaft and started mining for rails. I also had extra rails left over in our chest, but that was not enough. So I used the last of my iron to make even more rails. I didn't have enough rails to get me right up to the water, but I did make a little pathway for the villagers to go to to get them in the minecart to bring them back to our base. Day 79 and I have both of the villagers at our base and I am now collecting the rails on my way back so I can use these rails to transport the villagers to where our iron farm will be. I then got both of the villagers into a boat and built around them so they could stay safe. Now it was time for me to gather all the supplies I need for the iron farm and I do need hoppers and since I have no iron left I had to go mining to get some iron to build our iron farm. Day 81 and I have everything I need to build this iron farm I just need to get everything together. Day 82 and I have everything now sitting in a chest. The only thing left to do is clear out some area and get started. Day 83 and I am now following the tutorial from 1UpMC on how to build this iron farm. If you want to build it for yourself, I'll have a link to that video down below in the description. Day 84 and I finished building the iron farm. The only thing left to do is transfer the villagers. So I make a little pathway with rails for the villagers to get transferred to. Now the only thing left to do to get this iron farm started is to put our two villagers in a minecart and we are good to go. But when I go to do that, both of our villagers are gone. Right now, as I'm looking back on it, there is a pig that got into this little cage. So I'm thinking I may have left a block on the outside so they can just hop in. And a zombie possibly climbed up, jumped in, took out both of the villagers, and then when the sun came up, it got rid of the zombies. I was very upset at this point because this is a very time consuming process. Especially since I just do not have enough rails, I have to break all of the rails, place all of the rails, and then I'd have to break all of them and place them all again. And that's not to mention traveling to the village and traveling back. But since I'm so close to finishing this project, I decide to not give up on the iron farm and I start to dig out a path from where the ocean is at all the way to my base. Let's get started. I first dig this tunnel all the way to my base. Then I connect it with what rails I have. Then I go and get the villagers. Now I have to bring the villagers all the way to that tunnel, drag the villagers through the tunnel to the nearest minecart, and then push the villagers on the minecart to get them to the iron farm. After I get both of the villagers in the iron farm, I then have to farm a bunch of carrots, give it to the villagers so they make more villagers, and then wait to have enough villagers so iron golems can start spawning. Finishing up day 97, I start decorating our iron farm, and I continue going along with the jungle theme, continuing with leaves and planting trees around. Also, when I was transporting the villagers, there was a cat that jumped in the boat with the villagers, so I brought him home and I will let one of you name the cat if we get around to doing a 200 days. But through the rest of day 98, I just finish up the decoration, adding logs and moss around our iron farm. Day 99 hits and I have no more bones for bone mill, so now it's just up to waiting for our carrots to grow so we can continue expanding our iron farm villagers. We have now survived 100 days on Minecraft Bedrock Edition without dying, and we have completed all three of our goals from the beginning, including defeating the Ender Dragon. If you want a 200 days, please be sure to let me know down in the comments. I will be continuing the 1.19 Java Edition survival let's play I got going on right now. But depending on how well this 100 days does, will determine if I do make a 200 days sometime in the future. Thank you all for 3,500 subscribers, and I hope to see you all in my next video.